Vented enclosures are similar to a sealed enclosure in design, except that they add a port that is a certain length and a certain area around. This port is tuned to one frequency by varying the two parameters of area and length. By adding this port, the rear wave of the cone motion is used to reinforce the front wave. When done properly, the subwoofer system becomes more efficient than a comparable sealed enclosure above the port's tuning frequency. Below the port tuning frequency, the woofer will become unstable when unload, causing the woofer to oscillate violently, leading to premature woofer failure. Benches of bandpass design are a high efficiency over a small range of frequencies and some filtering characteristics. Disadvantages are decreased frequency response, less accurate reproduction, extreme complexity in design and assembly, greater woofer unloading, and decreased power handling. For this video, we will be constructing one of each enclosure type. We'll also explore different enclosure and port shapes and how to design them using the drivers you are using in your enclosure and their mounting configuration, and click Next. Note the EBP, or Efficiency Bandwidth Product Number. This is found by dividing the resonant frequency, FS, by the driver's electrical Q, or QES. The higher the EBP, the more suited the driver is for a venting enclosure, and the lower the EBP, the more suited it is for a sealed enclosure. This is indicated by the vertical bar in the middle of the window. Choose your box type from the drop-down window, and click Finish. The graph that is created shows the output of our woofer in its ideal box This gives size. us a rear enclosure volume of 0.31 cubic feet and a front enclosure of 0.25 cubic feet. The enclosure will be tuned to 75 Hz. Looking at the graph, we can see that this enclosure will have a strong output that begins to taper off at 60 Hz, with a 3 decibel down point around 45 Hz. We'll accept this enclosure and it can now calculate the port we need. Clicking on the Vents tab, we'll choose to use a rectangular port for this enclosure. By making the change to 0.75 cubic feet, we can see our system Q has changed to 0.93. By clicking on the graph line, we can follow the output and see the values of the output for each frequency at the bottom left corner of the plot window. Our new enclosure gives a 1 decibel rise centered around 80 Hz. We can also see the smaller enclosure will give less low base output below 50 Hz. However, the output is only 3 decibels less at 30 Hz, and most base information never drops below about 60 Hz. So by having the box size, we can see a 1 decibel rise at 80 Hz, a 3 decibel drop off starting at 50 Hz. calculation, you'll see Optimic is telling us that a quarter sheet will not be large enough for this enclosure. We fix this by changing our material. Double click on the material, select Edit Record, and change to a full sheet which is 49 inches by 97 inches. Click Save and close the current window. Click the Cutting Plan Proposal icon. Click Calculation, then click Cutting Plans. You'll see that Optimic has optimized the layout and created the cutting sheet automatically. Print this out and you're ready to cut your material. It will not be visible when the enclosure is completed. We'll need to either mount the woofer prior to completion or make one of the panels removable. I always make the panel removable in case the woofer needs to be repaired or replaced. I accomplish this by leaving one end caulked and screwed but not glued. We'll cut out the hole for the woofer and the terminal cup at this time. We'll start the construction by attaching the bottom and one of the side panels. We could use the wood screws as before, but an air nailer is much faster. If you have access to one, it will speed your enclosure construction time considerably. The enclosure flexes the most along its longest panels. There are two types of braces that can be used to break up these dimensions. The first is the cross brace, which is a strip of wood that is connected between the two panels. The other type is a shelf brace. It's basically an internal divider with holes drilled in it. This is the kind I prefer to use because they are easy to install and provide bracing in two dimensions rather than just one. We'll need to mount the shelf brace off-center so it will not interfere with woofer mounting. Make a mark on either side of the, the output of each woofer outdoors. Now compare this to the output of each woofer in the vehicle. Notice the rise in low frequency output. This is called cabin gain or the transfer function and usually begins to take effect around 80 Hz. The exact value is dependent on your vehicle. Here's the cabin gain for this Looking vehicle. Looking at this graph of output for the sealed enclosure in the vehicle shows that major differences in output can be realized in different locations and firing orientations. For this example, the rear corner provided the most gain at low frequencies. This holds true with practice of corner loading to get more bass. You almost always get more bass by placing your subwoofer system. see how system. lower frequencies have a greater time delay with the ported enclosure and the greatest with the bandpass enclosure. This time delay, called group delay, is a factor in the muddiness often associated with ported enclosures. The lower frequencies are actually arriving at the listener's ears later than they should, and the time difference, measured in milliseconds, is called group delay. 